it's uh, nice and quiet at the minute. All the machines have stopped, uh, including this one. I'm very, very proud of this machine. Uh, it's uh, one of my own invention, um, and it's all for the lace making industry. Um, so what this machine allows us to do is put a diagonal thread uh, within, within the lace. And up until this point in time, uh, my invention came out in 1803, um, you had to uh, do it all by hand. So of course it makes things a lot, lot quicker, uh, which means that uh, if you want really decorative lace, it's much, much cheaper now. Uh, and it's uh, more affordable for thousands and thousands of, of, of ladies across the nation. So uh, uh, it's doing uh, remarkably well for me, remarkably well. Um, and of course, there's several of these at my factory and uh, Malt Mill Lane in Loughborough. So I came down from Derbyshire and, uh, and then uh, away we go. So uh, it's doing a, a fantastic job. Um, but looms like this are very, very common. Um, you seem to get single looms in different people's houses and what they do is they work on them uh, individually to create um, the, the, the lace that they're working on. Um, and um, if you look in towns and villages, uh, you'll see usually houses with lots of windows uh, on a top floor usually and that's where the, uh, the lace making process uh, is happening because they need lots of natural light to be able to see what's going on. Uh, you can't make lace really by candlelight. You can get all sorts of problems uh, when you're weaving. So natural light is the way to go. And a lot of individuals band together in these places and try and work together uh, as one uh, using the natural light. Um, so uh, in the big factories, of course, obviously we're, we're doing lace making. It's quite intricate. But in some of the big factories, uh, particularly the cotton ones like in, in Derbyshire, uh, I'm thinking of places like Cromford uh, or Arkwright Mill. Um, obviously the big one that Robert Owen built in the 18th century up in uh, New Lanark uh, Mill up in Scotland. Um, there's uh, the great danger is, is that these huge machines are taking the work of, of, of skilled people because to operate a loom like this it's a very, very skilled job. The big machines are doing most of the work for you and you are literally just operating the machine. Um, and of course what that means is you get this influx of people uh, from the, the countryside because thanks to the agricultural revolution with lots of new machines it's taken a lot of uh, people's work off the land so you get unskilled people flooding into these factories it's putting uh, ordinary skilled workers out of business and obviously the people don't like that and of course um, that's led to uh, back in the 1780s now uh, a man called Ned Ludd a uh, Leicestershire man from Anstey and uh, he's the problem is, is that what they've been doing is they've been going around and smashing up machines, they're machine breakers, um, which is a hanging offence, actually. Um, and uh, recently, we've had, we've had an attack ourselves on, on machines like this at a factory here in Loughborough. Um, so, yeah, 1817, you know, it's, it's pretty late on, you know, all of these Luddite attacks, in theory, have, have finished. So, we're one of the most recent. Um, and that's what they do, they, they just smash them up. So I'm increasing, uh, you know, making sure the factory is as secure as possible so they can't get in. Because, it, it, you know, it costs us uh, money and it costs us production time as well. So uh, I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go around and have a look again. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we're opening all factories all the time. It's not just here. Uh, you know, we're hoping to open a new one down in uh, Tiverton in Devon uh, as well. But... Uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to go around and make sure that uh, doors and windows are strengthened and everything because I don't really want to lose another day's pay. Mm -hmm.